Hello and welcome back. This is Arun Patwardhan and today I will be talking about the different things that need to be kept in mind while distributing scripts. This will be the last article in the series. We will start off by examining where our script should be installed. This will impact how the end user will invoke the script. Once we are done with that, we will look at creating and placing a man page for our script. So far, we have not thought a lot about where we should keep our scripts. There are quite a few places where we can place the script. It depends on who will be using the script. If it's for any user on the computer, then we could place it in the root library scripts folder to make it, make it available system-wide. If it's for a specific user, then we can make it available to only that user by placing it in the scripts folder located within the home folder library folder. Or we could place it in the USR local bin folder. This also makes it available system-wide. However, there are a few interesting consequences of placing it in this folder. We will see those in just a moment. Now, depending on where we place the script, the user will have to specify the full path to the script to invoke it. This does the job, but it can get very tedious. We have seen so far that when we type out the name of a command, for example, defaults in terminal, it automatically executes it. We do not need to provide the path to the command. Wouldn't it be great if we could do this with our script too? This is possible by placing it in the USR local bin folder that we just spoke about in the previous slide. The system is configured to automatically go and look for commands, executables, scripts out there. There are other folders that the system examines too. We can get more information about these locations by running the print env path command, which prints details about the environment variable path. It prints out all the paths that the system searches for locating the requested command. We can also avoid typing the path to the script every time if we want using another way. But in order to do that we would need to update the path environment variable to include our new path. There are two ways to do this. We can update the path variable every time we run the session or if it's in another script, we can do that at the start of the script or we can update the startup script every time the shell is loaded. In reality, of course, it's a lot simpler to place it in the USR local bin folder as we can avoid having to make changes to the environment every time we need to use the command. Let us now place our script in the appropriate folder and see it in action. Script. Now we would like to deploy it into the USR bin local folder so that we can actually see in action that we do not need to provide the path to the script uh, in order to run it. I'll make a few changes before that. Let's just update the date to today's. I'm also going to change the name of the file, but I'll do that later from Finder. So I'll just be calling it Folder Creator. USR Local Bin. And I'll be giving it execute privileges. We won't be needing the extension because I'll be giving it execute privileges. And of course, later we'll be seeing how to create a man page. Uh, everything else I'll keep the same. This is version 8. Everything else remains the same. Uh, 
अपने दोष नंबर and yep so we just prepared our script for this i will rename this to folder creator open up terminal go to the desktop and using the chmod command i will give the folder creator script execute privileges and we will also rename it to just folder creator there you go so if i wanted to run the script i would do provide the path and done notice i had to provide the path here now here's where we are going to make things a little different when you open up finder and i press shift command period i can see a lot of hidden folders there there is my usr folder which normally is not something we can change because it is protected under sip but there is an exception to it with the bin folder out here I could either use terminal to copy it out here, or I can just copy folder creator here. But before I do that, if I use the which command, it says that the command isn't found, and the reason for that is if I look at the paths that it's exploring, it is looking at these folders, and notice. USR local bin is in there. It's one of the folders it searches. So let us just copy this command here. And run the which command again. This time notice it's put the path of the folder here. I could just type folder creator and this time i didn't have to provide the path it went ahead and executed the command for me this makes it a lot simpler what if our script sit in a different folder but still have the luxury of not having to type the path out well it's possible to do that now let's explore that using a couple of scripts that I have here for example. I'll open them up with code runner. I have a message script that just echoes out a message with some date and a random number. And I have a test script which would like to run my message script and get the path for that script using the which command. But it's what I've done before that that is really interesting. I'm using the export command to provide a developer path, which is my own variable, and a path to a folder where my messages, message.bash would sit. And then I'm updating the path command for the scope of this script to also include the developer path to all the existing paths. So we are adding an extra path to the existing list of paths that the path variable holds. Now, in order to do that first, let me just copy the messages folder uh, script into our shared scripts folder. Now let's just run this to see how it works. There you go, it's run the script and printed out the path to the message command. We can see an extra slash there, so let's get rid of it from here. And there you go. 
it's printed it out. So even though our script was sitting in a different folder, we didn't have to explicitly specify the path to that script. But we would need to do that in every script that is invoking this script. Because this path will only contain a new path for the duration of that particular script. Once the script is ended, the path contains the original values and develop a path is no longer part of it. Now, we could also avoid having to do this every time by updating the startup script. So if you go back to Finder, shift command period to view hidden files, there is a folder called etc that contains startup scripts. Now the startup shell for our system by default is ZSH. So there is a startup script for ZSH called as ZSHRC. If you've changed it to some other shell, then you would find that corresponding startup script for that shell out here, say for example bash. But ours is ZSH. So I'm going to modify ZSHRC which is in the ATC folder. And I'm going to modify it by adding a little piece of code in the end. So we do not have permission to directly change this. Let's copy this onto desktop and then open it with Xcode from the desktop. And what we're going to do here is that we're going to add a couple of lines. First, let me create a new script. I'm going to call this new path dot bash and I'm going to save it on the desktop. Now, this script is only going to contain the export commands we saw earlier. So let me open it up and copy these two. That's it. So it's only going to contain the export command that updates the path variable. This is also on the desktop. I will place the script in the user's shared folder. In fact, we will need the hidden folders and we'll keep them in a moment. And what I'm going to say out here is if a file called users shared new path dot bash exists then source that particular file. Now source is not something we've explored in detail but what it does is rather than executing new path as its own script, it incorporates that script into our script and runs it as a part of our own script. So we're saying take that script, include it in our script and run it as a part of our script. So we're checking to see if the script exists, source it in and execute it. Now, I will copy just to be safe. I will copy uh, the original ZSR, uh, the startup script into the documents folder. And then I will say sudo copy to
Now, what does this mean? It means that every time we open up terminal, it's going to run that startup script and it's going to update the path for us. So, I'm going to quit terminal. I'm going to start terminal again. Let's just first print the path. And there you go. The user shared scripts folder is there. And if I do message.bash, it ran it. I didn't have to put the path even though it's in non-standard location. And if I do which message.bash, it gives me the path out there. So I could do this if I wanted also, but of, of course it means there are a lot of changes that I need to make. It's a lot simpler to just go ahead and put it in the USR local bin folder because then we do not need to go through the hassle of updating the path. And that's it. That's how you could deploy a script. Next, we'll look at a man page. Once our users can easily run the command, the next step would be offering access to help and documentation. Now we have already offered access to help and documentation via the script itself. But wouldn't a man page be nice? People are familiar with the man command and use it often to understand more about the executables they wish to use. They are likely to try it out on our script. We could easily offer a man page for our script. Let's have a look at how we could go about doing that. Creating a man page is very simple. We just have to create a file in the proper format and place it in the correct folder. You can get more information about this by running the man command on the man command itself. A man page contains many sections. You can check this out by running the man command on any known command. So, for example, a man page would contain a section which gives us the name of the command, a brief introduction about the command, a description or as to what the command does and what it's intended for, the different options or verbs available with the command, any requirements that need to be satisfied before using the command, how and where to install the command if needed, how to use the command, things that you need to keep in mind before using the command, what to expect when the command or executable ends, some examples on how to use the command, any troubleshooting steps that you could perform, copyright and contact details. In order to create the man page, we need to put the content for the different sections in the appropriate format. This, this is achieved with the help of mandoc macros. The table here lists out some of the format specifiers we would use. So for example, dot capital D small d is used to specify the date when the man page was created or published. Dot capital S small h is the section header name. Dot capital N small m is the name of the command. Like this, there are several different macros that are available, giving information or helping you format different parts of your man page. Now that we've seen some of the things that we need, let us go ahead and see how we could create our own man page for our script. Create a script and we can see that once it's sitting in USR local bin, users can directly invoke the script without having to provide the path. But let's see what happens when a user tries to open the man page for folder creator. No manual entry found. Kind of makes sense. We haven't created a man page yet. But as we've seen, you know, it's quite likely that users are going to do this because they are sort of trained to expect a man page uh, for different commands. So how do we create them? Well, there are several tools that will come in handy, several commands that can provide us information. And we'll need a lot of that information. 
right? So, for example, let's start off by running the man command on man. And it gives us some nice information about the man command itself, including how, if you wanted, you could place it in a custom path. Uh, we won't be looking at that. But there was something very useful right at the top sections so your commands fall into different sections and depending on the kind of command it will go in a particular place we are creating a user command so we would go to section one brilliant that's one piece of information that we wanted there are other commands too for example Groff is the formatting tool that's used to format our document. Okay. There's Groff, there is Mandoc, uh, which gives more information about formatting man, uh, man pages. We'll be using this command in a moment. There is Mdoc also, which is quite handy. Uh, in fact, here it gives you a structure of the program, what to expect in a man page and so on. All that information, including the different macros that we could be using. So, armed with all of this information, I have actually already created a man page and kept it ready. Let's have a look at what it contains and compare it with how it looks. Now, before I walk uh, you through what's in here, let me just run the man command on folder creator notice it's ending with an extension one because it's part of section one of the man page and there you go it looks like a man page that you've seen before name synopsis description verbs requirement installation usage warning exit status examples diagnostics copyright contact details all those things out here now how did we render this well, that's what this file provides. Dot slashes are comments which are ignored by the rendering tool. DD is the date of the man page. So I would open, keep toggling between the two pages to, so that you can compare with what you see here and what you see on the man page. So if I scroll all the way down to the bottom of the man page, there's the date. Title is folder creator space one. There you go. That's how the title is being populated. OS is Mac OS 11. Scroll all the way down, right hand corner, Mac OS 11. We start off first with a section called name section called name the name of the command is folder creator which is why you can see it highlighted out here followed by the description of the name that's what's populated out here so you just have to provide things in the proper sequence in the, with the proper macro and it should be fine then we've got a section called synopsis and Anywhere further in the script, wherever we refer to the name macro, it actually automatically places folder creator out there. So folder creator, arguments are your folder names, and operations are the different verbs that you might have. And depending on the type of macro, you can see it's rendering the output a little differently. Similarly, you've got a section for description, You've got a uh, macro for new line. Okay. 
okay you've got different options a list of verbs for dash h dash help dash v dash version in a <coughs> listed out here you can build a list you can specify the requirements along with spacing so that you can neatly arrange and line those up and you can go ahead and go through the document this way it is tedious uh, a nice thing to do would be to actually pick up an existing man page and I'll show you in a moment where those are and just use it from there copy that out and start using that as a reference one thing that you're going to encounter when you're creating man pages is the fact that you're going to make mistakes the man talk command actually allows you to check for that and it gives you information about formatting errors and how you should fix it and where you should fix it so the mando-t lint and the path to your man page will help you find out what's going wrong with your man page but once it's done and ready it's a question of just placing it in the correct folder so let me now just first show you some man pages that are there already they are under USR share and you can see there are different man pages out here based on different sections Notice that they are ending with 1 for section 1, ending with 4 for section 4. Let's see if there's a nice little familiar command that we have. Defaults. Also, defaults is under section 1. We can now see how this comes in handy there you go defaults so you can see all your man pages are out here but of course we can't make a change here thanks to SIP so instead we need to go to local create a new folder Called share within which we need to create a folder called man and a folder called man1 and we need to drag a man page out here So let me just fire up terminal and if everything is okay man and folder creator now directly opens up the man page for it this completes the entire process the whole experience is a lot simpler now yes creating a man page can be tedious but it really makes the end user experience wonderful so that's it later on when you're planning to package and distribute the script all you need to do is place it in the correct folder place the man page in the correct folder and your script is ready to go and use uh, it, it's really simple and something I would strongly encourage that you do command as well as the man page and that's it that's how you deploy a script on its own page. And that wraps up our scripting series. There are so many things that we've covered from the first part, such as writing events to log files, user interaction, functions, arrays to make our script scalable, loops to 
also make a script compact variables offering help through the help verb and options documentation deploying a script to the appropriate folder creating a man page there are so many things that we've seen scripting is never a one off process in fact it's a continuous process in many cases it never really ends a good thing to do if you're going to write scripts is to have a repository of scripts a place you can go to to see how a particular sub feature was implemented so if you're writing a script at a future date you could easily revisit a snippet of code you'd written in a previous script pick it up from there and reuse it in your own script as you write scripts over time this repository will grow and it will contain a lot of useful information and lastly practice the more scripts you write the more comfortable you will feel with scripting it is truly a liberating liberating experience i hope you have enjoyed the past few articles and have learned something useful have fun writing scripts thank you